There is a, sort of a rating protocol, what is called the dead donor rule. Do, do you want to explain how this works? Yeah, it's, it's basically uh, there as a moral and in some uh, jurisdictions a legal obligation to make sure that you don't harm a living patient by removing their organs or kill them, that somebody has to be dead before you remove their organs to benefit somebody else. It and, makes sense, right? Uh, sure, it certainly does to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, does that, uh, does that inhibit the, the maximum use of <laughs> organs that are made available for transplantation? So, uh, you know, if you, if you look at um, the inverted pyramid of everybody who is likely to die, versus everybody who's dead, if you look at it from that point of view, you would say as somebody on the transplant side of things whose interest it is to provide transplant to their people who are on the waiting list who have a high risk of dying on the waiting list, you would say, well, if you're going to inevitably die, why not, why isn't that okay to, and you want to donate organs, you're going to inevitably die, you've said you wanted to donate organs, why can't we take organs before you're actually dead? I personally have a big problem with that. I think, I think that is a, a, a large gray area of practice. We're talking about uh, uncertainty of prognosis that we already have in the, in the dying phase and terminal illnesses. And for me, uh, the dead donor rule is sacrosanct. It is the foundation of professional trust. It is the foundation of public trust that uh, we are going to try to save your life when we can. And it's only when you are dead, not maybe dying, that uh, we will approach you to, to, get, uh, to donate organs. And uh, the organ donation and transplant system system will fail if there is no public trust. It is based on benevolence of people and the willingness to help. Uh, uh, and uh, so I, I am a strong believer in the dead donor rule. I, I think the discussions that are out there are more of an academic debate than they are a real policy or practice debate. Um, I think but, but isn't there a question about how we define death? I mean, what is the moment of death? Is it, is it the death of the brain? Is that the determining factor? Um, you know, I, I, I am currently, in fact, working with the World Health Organization to develop international guidelines for death. Uh, and there is an evolution in what we understand, I believe. There, the, historically, this issue of brain death, or what is the irreversible and complete cessation of all functions of the brain, um, is uh, historically when it started in the late 60s, uh, was very controversial. It was this new thing. It was uh, a, a result of advances in transplantation, but more a result of advances of all these life support technologies that keep bodies alive but can't help change illness. And, um, uh, but as time has gone on and technologies have continued to advance, it all is kind of converging into one singular definition of death. This is my own personal opinion, not a policy opinion. Uh, in, in the United States, there's two determinations of death. It's either after your heart stops or after your brain stops. Um, but I think we are converging with this advance in technology to center it on the brain. Uh, everything that we are is related to the functioning of the brain, and when your brain completely stops working and will not resume functioning, that is uh, effectively death, whether or not your, your body is supported by organ support technologies or not. And you arrive there because you have a brain injury that destroys your brain, or in fact you arrive there because your heart stops and no longer delivers oxygen and circulation to your brain. And those are the two paths to go there. So yeah, I think it's all about the brain.